The SNES, for many, this is the retro console that defined their childhood and holds a special place in their heart. And it's no different for RPG fans, with the SNES being home to some of the favourites of all time, such as Final Fantasy VI, Breath of Fires, and even Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, and more. It has a catalogue of over 150 titles that could be considered RPGs. There are bound to be some that slip through the cracks in most people's collections. As we can see in a lot of cases that I'm going to mention soon, just didn't get a translation until your friendly neighbourhood fan translator came along and solved the Moon Runes issue. So anyway, first up for our SNES RPGs, it's one that came out in 1992 in Japan and 19, eh, 1993 in North America, but never saw an EU release. And that is Paladin's Quest. But what is a Paladin's Quest? Well, this is an RPG with a unique look and feel compared to many of the others on the consoles, or even today. It has an interesting palette colour and a fun story. We take on the role of Chenzi, who um, accidentally unleashes an ancient evil, so he kind of sets out to make amends. So in battle, it has the like fantasy star style over the shoulder look, which is quite nice because you get quite big enemy sprites. But it's twist in battle is there's no MP. Spells actually cost your HP. And the only way to recover that is through potions because a healing spell wouldn't make sense because, you know, if spells are damaging your life force, how would it recover it? But there we go. It makes sense in a, in a strange way. But it has a lot of all the um, like usual RPG tropes, which isn't a bad thing. Overall, it's actually quite a fun game with a unique art style and uh, you'll enjoy it as long as you're okay with some grinding. The next couple of games are fan translated and never actually saw a western release of any sort until the wonderful fan translators came along and translated them for us. So be sure to praise the fan translation gods that we actually got to play any of them. But anyway, Energy Breaker comes from the somewhat popular devs of the Lufia series and there's even some vague hints in the game that it's set in the same world as the Lufia games. So maybe this is kind of like a, uh, a spin-off game. So Energy Breaker sees us take on the role of Myra, a 21-year-old anime classic amnesiac character that's having visions of a great catastrophe and soon finds herself set against a evil, mysterious dark generals. And you probably know it's going to save the world along the way. Energy Breaker is a fun mix of traditional RPG games and tactics title, with you being able to explore towns and dungeons, etc., outside of battle, very much like a traditional game, or say something like Shining Force, um, while the battles themselves are classic tactic games on the isometric grid. Think Final Fantasy Tactics. Energy Breaker overall is like a fun romp, and especially worth finding that fan translation if you're a Lufia fan. So, a bit of a confession. I like tactics games. If you see my channel, most of my reviews and such are about that sort of thing. And personally, I feel they're not talked about enough. And the SNES has a bunch of good ones on it that have just fallen under the radar, usually because they're lacking a translation. But thanks to the fan translators, we get to play the next one, which is Bahamut Lagoon. It came out in 1996 and was actually made by Square. So why it never got translated, I don't know. This is such an interesting title as it revolves around Bu, who is fighting for his kingdom against an invading empire. Like, not the most complex story ever, but it's an interesting background for the main part of the game, and that is dragons. Basically, all you guys get dragons, and you get to raise those dragons as part of your units in the tactics game. And they'll evolve in different ways, and depend on how you feed them and such. There's so much room for exploring fun different ways to raise these dragons that it, it adds an interesting twist to the usual tactics formula. But anyway, Bathmark Lagoon has both the pedigree and the genre to make it really good. So time to grab that fan translation, ace up and give it a blast. So honestly, this is the last tactics title, I promise. But the next one is a bit more controversial than the last one. Um, basically being a massive Shining Force fan that I am, I had to shout out Feather, the Emblem of Justice. It was released in Japan in 1994 and is like 
the SNES's not Shining Force game. <laughs> a lot of crossover with staff and playstyle. If you're a fan of Shining Force titles, it's really worth giving this a blast. Um, but what is it? Well, this is a world set in constant war and death is just a way of life. We take on the role of Brian and his buddy Alan, who are basically war-weary soldiers, fed up with the terrible acts that they've been that all sides have been committing, so they set out on their own path to the future. While the game borrows heavily from Shining Force, it has a unique point in its story is very different. So, but the combat's quite similar, and you can get to explore towns in a Shining Force manner. But it does have its own twist, and that's the alignment system that drifts between chaos and order. And it all depends on your actions in battle as opposed to conversation choices. And depending on how you do things, like how damaged your units get, how many enemies you kill, all this sort of stuff, will affect whether you fall down the chaos route or the order route. It's actually quite an interesting way of doing that morality system. But anyway, tactics fans, and especially Shining Force fans, should give this one a go. As promised, this last title is in the tactics game, but it said something I don't talk about very much, and that's action RPG. And it's called Brain Lord, and no, I'm not just talking about it just because of the name. Well, maybe a little bit, but anyway, Brain Lord was produced by Produce and is published by Enix in 1994 in both Japan and the US. The US one came out a couple of months later. But again, there was no EU release because everyone hates the EU. You take on the role of Ramir or Lemiel or however it was translated in whichever version you're using, the official or non-officials. And he's basically set out to kill a dragon. To do this, it's going to involve a lot of dungeon delving and solving puzzles. It's quite similar in some ways to the East titles in both feel and play. But it produce add big difference in that they have a lot of variety in weapons and other items and such to mix up combat quite a bit so if your reflexes are up to it then give brain lord a go if nothing more than say to people that you played a game called brain lord so there we have five overlooked rpgs on the snes if there are any titles you feel are overlooked or deserve some attention chuck them in the comments and don't forget to like subscribe and all that jazz see you again soon